Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of KMRD Radio Stuff. My name is Mike and today we're going to be taking a look at a cool VHF UHF water resistant Bluetooth programmable radio from Radiotity. This is the GS5B. Stay tuned. Now let's take a look at what we have here, but before we begin, I do want to say that Radiotity contacted me and asked if I'd be interested in reviewing this radio in exchange for a video. So they did send me this free of charge. Now that that's out of the way, let's take a look at what's in the box. So obviously, first and foremost, we get the GS5B. It does come with a belt clip that you do need to screw on. It is separate from the battery though, which is nice. So you can replace the battery without having to take the uh, belt clip off. Always like that. Comes with a nice antenna. Uh, this is very similar to uh, one of the Nagoya. I think it's the 770 antennas that I have. So not your standard kind of junky HT um, antenna. This is actually pretty nice. I like this. I've, I've hit some repeaters pretty far away with this. Then it comes with a 12 volt charging adapter with your standard barrel connector there. Little uh, hand strap thing that I never use. And then it comes with your uh, kind of FBI style air speaker thing for your ears. And then your little uh, PTT thing here to hook it up. And it comes with a manual that is written actually very well. And it is in uh, English and German. So there's a lot of nice things to like about this radio. One, I just like the color. It's bright, it's vibrant. Uh, it's something that's not going to easily get lost out in the field. It is IP56 uh, rated, which means it is uh, resistant against dust and water ingress. So it, you can be out in the rain. It's not going to hurt this. You don't want to submerge it, but uh, you can definitely be out there in the rain. Uh, it's all, it won't get any dust in there. Everything's sealed up really well. Uh, nice rubberized buttons and whatnot. So nice and rugged which is always good for me because I'm always pretty uh, harsh on things. Another nice feature of this radio is you can charge it two different ways. You can use the charging cradle that it comes with that actually has 12 volt input, which I always love because you can just hook that right up to your power supply. Or it also has a five volt uh, micro USB socket to charge from as well. So you can charge from the cradle with either 12 volt or five volt USB. The other cool thing if you turn this radio around, you've got a USB charging port here on the back. So you just flip up this rubberized cover and you can also charge this USB on the go. So very, very nice. This is, uh, I don't know why more radio companies don't have USB charging in them. I, it's, it, it's paramount these days. Everything in the world is USB. Why not uh, have an option to charge our radios USB? So let's take a quick walk around the radio and I'll show you what all the buttons and things do. Starting off on the left side of the radio, we have a, a torch or a lamp or a light, depending on <laughs> what country you're in, what do you call it? There's a, there's a flashlight on the bottom of this. This is one of the main things that drew me to this radio. I'm very much a flashlight nerd and very much a ham radio nerd. So if we push this button once, we get a solid flashlight. If we push it again, it's actually flashing uh, white, red, and blue, so <laughs> you can, you can uh, play cops and robbers with it, I guess. And then a third press of the button turns the light off. Next, we have dual PTTs. So it is a dual VFO. It's, it's dual, uh, dual standby. You can't hear two frequencies at once, but if you're monitoring channel A and someone comes in on channel B, uh, that will open up. So the top PTT controls the top VFO and the bottom PTT controls the bottom VFO. Then we have a programmable button that uh, by default is going to turn on your FM radio. And if you long press it, it will control, if you watch that L right there, that's going to control your power so you have high and low. Taking a look at the top of the radio, we have our on off slash volume knob here. We've got our transmit indication light and we have a male SMA connector for the antenna port. Looking at the front of the radio, we've got our menu button 
that's going to open up the menu. Then we've got our up and down keys to cycle between the different menu options. And then we have our exit button will bring us back. If we long press this menu button, that will cycle between VFO and memory mode. And our exit button is going to cycle between VFOA or VFOB. Then we have our standard uh, DTMF keypad here. So you can, we're in VFO mode right now, so we can just type in whatever frequency you want. The star key, if we long press that, that's gonna go ahead and lock the keypad so nothing else can be touched or accidentally bumped other than these uh, left four buttons are still active. Holding down the pound key is going to scan between our frequencies or VFO, whichever you have. Click it again to get out. And it might be hard to see, but behind the keys, there is a very nice, very loud speaker. This thing uh, is probably, probably one of the loudest HTs I own. This thing is, is very loud. I put it on FM radio in my living room and cranked it up and it filled the whole room. So it is nice and loud, which is great for outside. Here's our little microphone there. So that's where you're going to want to speak in. And then the screen itself is very nice. It's a color display. It's about an inch or so, pretty standard uh, color screen, similar to what you'd find on a, uh, just about any DMR radio. You've got a nice signal indicator up here, and then you're going to have all kinds of different icons depending on what settings you have up here. Also note, there's a little Bluetooth icon there because we can program this with our phone, which is awesome. Looking on the right-hand side of the radio, uh, the only thing that's on here, like these look like buttons. They're not. This is uh, where we're going to plug in our uh, microphone or programming cable. Nice, nice uh, kind of ruggedized rubber there uh, to keep it all nice and watertight. And then again, on the back, we've got a 2000 milliamp hour battery with our USB charging input. And there is also a USB uh, charging indicator light here that's red when it's charging and green when it is charged. Now, the coolest thing about this radio is its ability to be programmed via Bluetooth from your iPhone or your Android phone. Just download the Radio Oddity app uh, and you are good to go. So you'll notice the little Bluetooth icon there. I'm going to hit, uh, well, I'm already connected. So this is the main screen here. And the first thing we want to do is hit the read button. That's going to bring in all the frequencies or no frequencies or whatever, however your radio is programmed. That's going to bring it into the software and allow us to manipulate it. So we're just going to wait a second for this to upload and then we can start programming. And there we go. So I'm going to open up repeater book and just pick, uh, I don't know. Let's go Willis. Sure. No idea where that is somewhere south of me. So we're going to program the Willis repeater in and we're going to go to settings and I'm just going to pick, uh, I think seven is open. Uh, before we do this, I'll give you a walk around here. So channel name, we can name our channel, whatever we want, uh, up to 10 characters. We've got our receive frequency, our transmit frequency, our, our receive CTCSS, transmit CTCSS, uh, scan add. That's going to allow you to add it to the scan function when you're scanning. Send allow. You definitely want to check that because if you don't, it won't transmit on that frequency. Busy lockout. If the frequency is in use, uh, it won't let you transmit. So uh, that's a nice feature to have. Uh, you got your transmit power high and low. We'll leave it on high. Your wide narrow. Signal code, PTT, uh, ID, and encryption. Then up here at the top under frequency mode, this is where you'll actually, you can set your VFO A and B. So I just got mine at 14652. You can do an offset, CTCSS, whatever, simplex, usually just leave that alone. And your transmit power, wide, narrow, etc. And then you can do the same thing for uh, the B band. And then you've got some optional features, your squelch level, battery save, box, backlight time, um, dual standby, beep, always turn that off, timeout timer, uh, voice prompt, DTM, all kinds of things. You can, you can configure this all kinds of which ways. Uh, it's, it's a really nice app, really, uh, really user-friendly, very intuitive. So let's go ahead and program a repeater. Uh, let's call this Willis. What you talking about, Willis? And let's see, what was that? 
442.625. And then the offset was, what was it? 447.625. And we got an 88.5 tone. So we click that. And that's all we need for that. So I'm going to go ahead and hit save. You will have to create some kind of folder to save it to. I just called mine test. And then we hit save. Great success. And then we can go back home, hit the right button. And now it's programming to the radio. This takes 30, 45 seconds. So we'll just sit here and wait for it to go on. And then we'll see uh, how we did in the radio. And there we are. It resets, reconnects the Bluetooth. So if you need to make any other changes, everything's already connected. So now we're done with the app. Let's hop back over to the radio. All right, so we just programmed in uh, channel seven. So let's see what we have. And there's channel seven, 442.625, and it's 20 miles away. The one thing that I've noticed is uh, the iOS version is a little wonky and it will usually, where is it? It'll usually change my CTCSS. So you can see receive CTCSS is on. Uh, every time I program the radio with the app, it does this. So uh, you've got to go in and turn it off, which is kind of annoying. They, they know about it. I told them about it, uh, but there is not an update as of the recording of this video. Not a big deal. That's the only thing you got to do and you're good to go. But uh, yeah, just super, super easy to program. So now let's do a quick audio test and uh, see how it sounds. Right, so let's test how well this sounds. I'm going to first be transmitting from my Yesu VX7R into the Radioddity so we can see how that sounds. And then I'll transmit from the Radioddity into the Yesu and we'll see how that sounds. This is K8MRD testing the Radioddity GS5B. One, two, three, four, five, five, four, three, two, one. Check two, check two, sibilance, sibilance, check two, K8MRD. This is K8MRD testing the audio of the Radioddity GS5B. One, two, three, four, five, five, four, three, two, one. The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. Check two, check two, sibilance, sibilance, K8MRD. Clear. And that's about it, gang. Uh... <laughs> I got to say, I'm really impressed with this radio. Uh, it's been so far K and MRD proof. Uh, like I said, I'm, I'm pretty rough on things and I haven't managed to hurt this too much yet. Um, perfect for anyone who travels or a new guy in a new state like me who really has no idea where he is and needs to program repeaters on the fly. You just bust out your phone, open up repeater book, program it, done, no computer necessary. Uh, there is PC programming software available for it. Haven't even downloaded it. Haven't even needed it because you can do everything with the app. And that's what I like. So uh, I will leave a link in the uh, description for a discount code to Radioddity. If you want to pick up one, uh, one of these or any other thing at Radioddity, I think it's a, a $15 coupon. So save a bit of money there. Use that link. And if you have any questions or comments, do leave them down below. I try to answer all of them. Uh, and other than that, hit the like, subscribe, share, whatever. Thanks again for watching another episode of K8MRD Radio Stuff. We'll see you later. 73.